missing some people. Some of them are sick, different things. I'd like to pray for the Barrett family in particular. I believe we'll see them again soon, but pray for them. I enjoy joking and playing with the children. We thank God for young people. Amen. Luke chapter 12, if you have it, Matthew, Mark, Luke. If you're back there around Genesis trying to find it, just, just uh, open your Bible anywhere. Yeah. Stand up with us. Would you take your Bible, turn to Luke 12, and stand together for the reading of the Scripture. We're just going to read six verses here in Luke chapter 12. I'd like to ask you just follow along silently while I read aloud. So glad you're here. Thank God for you visitors Amen. coming. Amen. Thank God. By the way, the Lord's been good to us this year. We've had a number of visitors I either get saved or join the church. Uh, Noah, so glad you got saved. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And uh, the Barrett family I just mentioned, um, they're the man of the family, Simon, he got saved here, right back here in his study, in his office back here. Got to baptize every one of them, six of them, and uh, y'all pray for them. If you're not sure you're saved, please consider it seriously and get it settled before you leave here this morning. Luke 12, verse 16, the Bible says in verse 16 of Luke 12, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do because I have no, no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I'll pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Our text verse will be verse 20. We'll read it one more time. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? which thou hast provided. May the Lord bless his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together today so far in Sunday school and now in the song service. It's been a blessing. I pray your blessings upon the children in junior church. And Father, I pray that you would have mercy upon us as we listen to the word of God. And may the Holy Spirit strike the heart of some unsaved person with the fear of the Lord, reproving them of sin, righteousness, and judgment, that they might flee from the wrath to come into the loving, outstretched arms of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid for our sins with his blood on the cross of Calvary, dying as a spotless, sinless substitute, and taking the sins of all mankind upon him was buried and rose again the third day. May someone believe on him unto life eternal today. Father, bless your children. Help us each one to realize that this night our soul might be required. It's a blessing to know we have a home in heaven. I pray everyone might leave this place having that absolute assurance and certainty for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated, please? I pray and encourage all of you to give me your undivided attention for about the next half hour that the Holy Spirit might work in your heart and life. Amen. And uh, may God help you to avoid any kind of distraction that might happen during the uh, service and listen. It might be that God will do a special work in your heart today. Amen. God said to this man, whose business was doing well, so well, that in order to store up his crops, he decided that what he needed to do is just take the time, money, and effort to tear down these old barns and build newer, bigger, better ones, and, and I'll store this all up and just live off of it for many, many years. 
And then the Lord said to him, Buddy, you are a fool. You're a fool because you neglected God. And you're thinking that you have just done well for your soul and for yourself. And you're just going to be able to retire and do nothing. And just enjoy the fruits of your labor for many years. Boy, your time's up on earth. He said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Yeah. I want to call the message title this morning Fright Night. Uh, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Fright Night. You know, one of the things that causes fear is something happened that you sure didn't expect to happen. Yeah. Somebody spooks you generally by coming up upon you and doing something unexpected. <laughs> we have any grown men in this building who have never grown out of that? Yeah. You enjoy sneaking up on someone and spooking them. Well, it wouldn't be so spooky if you said, I'm going to come up behind you and stick my finger in your back. <laughs> yeah. But if you just do it without telling them, it can cause someone to scream. Yeah. We have two or three ladies in our church that you need to be careful about stepping up behind them and taking them off guard <laughs> because you might hear a scream. <laughs> then we have a couple of them that might punch you in the face. <laughs> But one of the things that causes fear is some, something comes that's unexpected and it might be a noise, it might be a movement, uh, it could be almost anything, but if you're not ready for it, it can cause you to be fear. Move! <laughs> Did I get anybody? Did I get somebody? <laughs> some of you got, some of you got, some not, not me, some got me. But boo doesn't scare you, you know, if you expect it. I mean, if I were to, if I were to come up to you and, and shake hands with you today, like I've done with many people, I said boo. Yeah. <laughs> the word boo has no effect. No. Uh -huh. You know, unless it takes you off guard. That's right. You know, with its volume, or you know where it comes from. I mean, really, it could scare you if you don't think anybody else is in the room but That's you. Right. That's right. <laughs> You know, if you're in the room by yourself and you hear boo, <laughs> you know, it, could, it could scare you. But there's nothing about the word boo that, uh, that would scare anybody. But it's just that, you know, you being by yourself especially and, and something happening. And we don't have the kids in here who, who would appreciate this, but there was this little boy that um, was going to try to get home in time because he'd stayed out too late. Uh, with his buddies, and it done got dark. He was supposed to get home before dark, and the only way for him to get home fast was cut through the cemetery. Oh, no. <laughs> but if he went through the cemetery, he was so afraid that if he went through the cemetery that a ghost might get up at him. Yeah. And sure enough, he got just about a third of the way through the cemetery, and he looked behind him, and a ghost was after him. <laughs> yeah. And he walked faster. The ghost walked fast. <laughs> he double time, and the ghost started double time. Finally, he just broke off into a run, and the boy took off running. He looked behind him. The ghost had took off in a run, <laughs> and the ghost was a running, and he was a running, and he was a running. And the ghost was a running, and boy, he got confused out there in the cemetery. Finally, ended up having, he was just tuckered out, and he went over there and he sat down on the log. And he said, "I just can't do it. Can't go any further. He just wanted to get." And he was huffing and puffing. And then the ghost came up and sat down right next to it. And the ghost was huffing and puffing. He said, <laughs> and the ghost said, boy, we done a heap of running, didn't we? <laughs> he looked at that ghost. He said, yes, sir, we sure have. And he said, just as soon as I get my breath back, we're going to do some more. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't be scared. But you know what? There are times when it's appropriate to be scared. Yeah, that's right. And... <laughs> if you don't know the Lord as your Savior and you get word that you've got a terminal illness, yeah. 
You ought to be scared. Amen. If you don't know the Lord. Yep. Now if you do know the Lord, I sympathize with people who are scared. Yeah. But if you do know the Lord, you don't have to be scared. Right. In the fear of the Lord, there's strong confidence, the Bible says. Amen. And His children shall have a place of refuge in the time of death or approaching right. death or whatever. I sympathize with saved people who are fearful of things, but you don't have to be afraid. That's right. But if you're lost, you ought to be afraid. Amen. Matter of fact, if you're lost, I think you ought to be afraid all the time. Because yeah. you could die at any time. That's right. And you are not prepared. Yeah. I want to talk to you tonight about fright night. If you were to die, what's today, the 5th? If you were to die on December the 5th, this evening, if you were to die tonight, would it be an unexpected date for you to die? I mean, are you really planning on your life ending today? Have you got things fixed up and settled between you and God to where if this is your last day, that there's nothing that needs to be done? You know that you're saved. Is it? Or would it be an unexpected date for you? I mean, what I'm saying is, are you thinking that you'll get saved sometime down the road? You're planning on it. But you got some things in your life that you just don't feel like you could get rid of or whatever, you know. And you don't have to get rid of anything to get saved. All you do is trust Jesus and get saved. Amen. But unsaved people always think about that because they think about the things in their life that are not compatible with God. Yeah. They're not compatible with Christianity. <laughs> They're compatible with being saved. And you think, well, i got I got to get rid of some of this other stuff. But preacher, one of these days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it right. Folks, I've really heard some sincere people tell me that. That's right. <laughs> One of these days, preacher, I'm going to get saved. Yeah. Always scares me when somebody puts off right. salvation. Because that's foolish. Yeah. That's right. And you may get upset at me for saying, thou fool, but that's what the Lord said to this man yeah. who was expecting to be able to live for many years and he wasn't going to live for many years. So if you expect to live for many years and you're putting off doing what you really have as a top priority, yeah. should be a top priority today, and that is make sure you're prepared to meet God. Amen. If you haven't done that, you're a fool. Yeah. Thou fool. This night. A friend, every day is a gift. Amen. You ought to be thankful for every day that you have. Amen. It is a present. Yeah. It is a gift from the Lord. Amen. And if you don't know the Lord, you have this day as a gift from a long-suffering God. Right. The Lord's not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness, and that has to do with coming judgment of the world. But is long-suffering to us, yeah. not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. 2 Peter 3, 9. The reason why the Lord has allowed some of you wicked people, if you're unsaved, wicked people, He's allowed you to live it's because He loves you. Amen. And He's long-suffering. Right. And He's willing to save you today. He's right. given you another chance. You need to look at it as a gift from God. Every day is not only <coughs> a present, but every day is precious. Amen. Every day is valuable. Amen. The most valuable thing that a person can give to another person is his time. Yeah. Because you can't get it back. It can't be relived. But every day is a possibility. First of all, it's a possibility that you can achieve something wonderful. It's a possibility that you can get saved. It's another possibility is you could die on this day. That's right. And you need to understand that. Thou fool, I ask you, if you were to die tonight, would this be an unexpected date for you? He said, this night yes. thy soul shall be required of thee. Let me ask you another question. If you were to die on this day, if you were to die this evening, this night, number two, would it be an unexpected demand from you? See, God demanded something when this man was going to die that night. Unexpected day. But there was also an unexpected demand. I see the demand in one word of our text, and that is required. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. That's a demand. That means that when God demands that you stop, you're going to stop. That's 
That's right. You can ignore some people's demands. Some of you get demands by email. Some of you get demands by snail mail. Come on. The, the letter says, open this immediately. Yeah. And you yeah. say, we'll see about that. <laughs> you get demands. Uh, you could uh, be demanded something by the IRS. You could do, be demanded some, uh, something by summons that you receive from the sheriff. You could be demanded a number of things. But when God demands, it's required. And it could be that you're going to appear boom, for God this night. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. And the Lord may this night require you to stop. Death is an interruption. You may be on a bed of affliction, but it still, it stops, it interrupts yeah. anything that you're thinking about doing. Are you ready to meet God? Yeah. Not only will God demand that you stop, but if you were to die today, God would demand that you separate, not only from your situation, but you're going to separate from that which makes you the most comfortable. That's right. That is your own body. When you die, you'll find out that you're not your body. You're going to leave your body. When God says, He said, Thy soul shall be required of thee. The soul is required and leaves. At death, the soul leaves and the body is just there without the soul. And you're going to see, God will demand that you'll see that you waited too long. Third, let me say, if you were to die tonight, thinking about the unexpected that could really make it a fright night, and people scare me to death that won't get saved when they need to get saved. Yeah, it might be that if you get saved and you start living for God, there might, might really be some things you ought to change. You don't have to change one thing in order to get saved. But we all know that God's holy. Amen. We all know that God's righteous. Amen. And so some of you who are not saved, even though you hear me say it over and over and over, you do not have to give up anything. You don't have to start anything in order to get saved. You still know that there are some things that are going on in your life yeah. that are not pleasing to God. Amen. It doesn't matter how many times I tell you that that shouldn't keep you from getting saved. When you think about it, you think about, well, if I get saved, I ought not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you get it to where you understand that I'm saying you don't get saved by quitting that or by starting something else, you still got it in your mind. It'd be hypocritical for me to get saved and keep doing this. And so you say, well, I, I, let me, just give me some time. Yeah. Just give me some time and I will, I will get rid of this and, and I will, uh, if you, but the sad thing is, is if it happens tonight, it could be, unexpected damage to you. That's right. That's right. That man was doing so good. His business was prospering so well that he needed more barns to be able to store up all of his crops and all of his good. And the Lord said to him in this announcement about fright night, then who shall these things be? That's right. You're going to suffer 100% loss, boy. Yeah, you're rich now, but you're going to lose every bit of it tonight. Who's it going to belong to? You're going to lose the ground that you may have owned. <clears throat> Maybe you've got a good deal on a lot. We've got people here in this church who've lived in one spot for 40, 50, 60 years. You're going to lose it when you die. You'll leave it behind. Not only will you lose the ground that you feel comfortable with being your own, you're going to lose the goods that you've accumulated. And you've got in the attic, you've got in the cupboard, you've got in the storage bins and utility rooms and, and uh, closets and uh, uh, basements or whatever. You're going to lose the goods that you've accumulated. And you're going to lose the guarantee that gave you the peace that you are set up. Come on. There's people in this world who are lost, but they have a pension. That's right. they're, lo they're lost, but they have insurance. 
They're lost, but they have an additional piece of property somewhere. And when you die without Jesus Christ, that the stock that you own, the IRA that you have, the investments that you've made, everything that you've got to guarantee you a comfortable future, you'll lose every bit of it. That's right. Every bit of it. And that's damage. That's what people call damage. Yeah. Is when somebody asks, how, how, how much damage was it? Yeah. You're talking about things that have been just tore up. Yeah. Tore up, destroyed. We call it a loss in insurance. If you're not prepared, it's going to be scary. Uh -huh. To think about that those things that you had counted on, <coughs> they're gone. <coughs> You've heard me talk about it, the great white throne judgment, heaven and earth pass away. That's going to be a scary experience for unsaved people to stand before God and there's no ground beneath them. That's right. Amen. What's you going to stand on? Nothing. That's right. Just suspended out in space, standing before God, and your arguments won't make any difference. Just like we use the expression uh, concerning a, a worthless argument, he didn't have any ground to stand on. Yeah, that's right. When you stand before God and you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, all the hypocrites in the world are not going to be good enough grounds for God to let you into heaven. That's right. That's right. Every one of us should give account of himself to God. Frightening thing. Yeah. Lose everything. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. If you die tonight, would it be an unexpected destination for you? Uh -oh. Every week, our soul winners in our church ask people, if you died today, would you go to heaven? And people answer, I hope so. Yep. Or they say, I think so. Right. Or they say, I'm working at it. Right. Or I'm trying to be. Yeah. But the fact is, if you die unprepared, it's too late. Because right. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men, once to die, but after this, the judgment. The judgment. In our Bible Institute and Colsonisms, we just... We just finished a study of Catholicism. And the Catholics have invented, I'm saying they have invented, it is not in the Bible, they have invented a place where if you're not quite good enough to go to heaven, but you're quite, you're a little bit better than you should deserve to go to heaven. They got this little place called purgatory that they have invented. Folks, there's poor religious people all over this town That's right. praying for their husbands, yeah. praying for their dads, yeah. praying for the wife, praying for other loved ones who died, and uh, they know some bad things about them. Yeah. And in their mind, they're thinking, oh, I don't know if they go to heaven doing that, yeah. because they themselves are lost. And so they, they pray and they pay the priest. Mm -hmm. They count their prayer beads and all <clears throat> Hoping that their loved one, folks, it's too late. Right. It's too late. Yeah. You need to know where you're going yeah. when you die. Yeah. Hell is going to be full of people who talked about heaven. That's right. right. Hell is going to be full of people who talked about God. That's right. Talked about the Bible. Talked about Jesus. Even talked about getting saved. Yeah. Hell will be full of people who thought about getting saved. Hell will be full of people who tried to be religious. My friend, it's foolish. And I say that because God said, Thou fool. Yeah. It is foolish not to be prepared if Amen. this night thy soul were to be required of thee. Here's the good news. The good news is, is Christ has done everything that is necessary. Amen. To take care for your, of your sins right. and to take care of you going to heaven. Amen. There's not anything you can do. The ticket to heaven is paid for Amen. by the blood of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And the only way that anybody can get it is by grace mm -hmm. through faith. Amen. Amen. You can come down this aisle and you can <laughs> beg God to take you into heaven. But if you won't put faith in His Son to take you to heaven, mm -hmm. you won't get to heaven. <laughs>
You don't get an answer by, by you just pray. You get to heaven by taking Jesus Christ by faith. Amen. To receive Christ is to believe on Him. Mm -hmm. Believe in Him without delay, the song said, Amen. and thou shalt be fully blessed. <clears throat> My friend, there's one time in the Bible where the question is asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They didn't tell him one thing he could do. What they said was, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And the belief that the Bible uses there, you don't have to go to any Hebrew, any Greek. All you have to do is compare Scripture with Scripture. And the belief that is in the Bible there is synonymous with faith and trust. Those are Bible words. There are two kinds of people, basically, in this world who are thinking about going to heaven. Right. There are people whose faith is in Jesus Christ and His shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Amen. That's me. And then there are those who are trusting anything else. Anything. It could be anything. Only trust Him. Only trust Him now. He will save you. He will save you now. This morning I posted on the internet from reading it in my daily Bible reading, 2 Corinthians 6 2. Today is the day of salvation. Would you stand with me? Heads bowed. I'd like to encourage you to watch.